Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost at the end. How about that? Uh, the still look of our um, of our donut is pretty much done. Um, what we're going to do in this part is just add an animation, do some keyframing, and have some movement. Uh, why? Well, it's an excuse to learn about the animation part of 3D animation, right? Um, because a lot of people will like just want to make stills, but a, a large number of you will also want to add some sort of animation. So I want to include this because it is such an important part, right? So anyway, um, we're just going to have the most basics of the basic animation, and that is simply the plate sliding in from the left-hand side and stopping. Very simple, short, and sweet. And it's an excuse to learn about keyframing and animation. So um, how do we do it? Well, we have along the bottom here, we have our uh, timeline, which is uh, 250 frames set uh, to default. By the way, you can define uh, exactly how many frames will be rendered in your animation by these amounts here, start and end frame. Um, and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with like time codes and how that relates to animation, um, for, uh, for one second of animation, uh, that is defined by your frame rate over here. So if you go to your, whatever that is, the output properties, you've got frame rate. So 24 frames per second. That means that one second of recorded, like what, what is played back to the viewer is uh, 24 frames. Um, now 24 frames is what's the like typical movie, like cinema um, frame rate. It is like the lowest possible frame rate you can get to before things start to feel like a little stuttery and juddery and a little fatiguing of the eyes. I technically don't really like 24 because especially for like quick animations, things look stuttery, right? So I actually prefer to go 29.97. Um, why? I mean, I don't know. It's more like familiar with like TV shows. That's usually the frame rate or like just aired television typically and there's like this growing debate and movement things are moving more towards like 60 frames per second by the way this whole tutorial series has been 60 frames per second which is why you can see my hand movement so smoothly right i would hope i hope you can hope somebody noticed right double the data being uploaded to youtube anyway so i'm going to set mine to 29.97 frames per second and i want my donut to slide in in one second uh, that's just, that's what I'm going off of, right? So this is the end point where I want my donut to land and sit, which means that uh, I want to set my, my time line point here to frame 30, okay? And then I want to create a keyframe here because this is the final point that I want my donut to sit. So um, we're going to do the keyframe on the plate because the plate has everything. Um, and just move it to make sure that there isn't anything left behind, any sprinkles or anything. Everything should be parented to your plate. So once it's parented, we can now, on frame 30, select our plate and then hit I. So I will enable you to add a keyframe. And um, you get a whole list here of like asking you what sort of keyframe do you want to um, want to create. It looks uh, confusing, right? Because it's like, I oh, just create a keyframe. But you could create it for the rotation only, the scale only, um, or all these other ones, delta, visual. I've never used any of those before in my life. Um, <laughs> Uh, what we're going to use is lock rot, which is actually location and rotation both, right? Um, which is very common. So that's the one that I'm going to go with, lock rot. Okay, and when you do that, you'll see down here in your timeline, you get these little uh, diamonds appear, right? And if you pulled this thing out here, you would see exactly what those diamonds relate to. But it's your X location, your Y location, your X, your... It's, it's the three axes for both location and rotation. Okay, so then we're going to move back to frame number one all the way to the start, and then I'm gonna move my plate where I want it to start, okay? So just off frame, and then because, hey, we're gonna shake it up a little bit, let's make it slide in like diagonally. So I'm gonna move it up along the X axis as well. So it's just gonna slide in like towards the camera as well. So move it a little bit further out of frame, and then I'm gonna hit I, location, rotation. Now if I hit space bar, and I'll probably need to go into solid view mode to see it, you'll get this, ta-da. And uh, yeah, I just noticed we didn't do any rotation. So I want, it to, I want it to rotate in at the same time, like a little bit of a sliding motion. So I'm gonna, uh, on frame number one, uh, hit R and then Z. So it's just rotating on the Z axis. And let's go for like minus 90 or I don't know, just, just, just to see how that looks. Then hit I, lock, rot, and then play that back. And you should see that it's now sliding in. 
Yay! Awesome. Um, and that's it. No, that's there's more to it. Uh, so, so one thing you'll note is that it just feels awkward, right? Like something's not right. The movement feels very fake. And the reason for that is that it's sliding out of frame and we want it to feel as though it's already got movement and momentum and then it's sliding in and it's stopping. Whereas right now it's starting slow, speeding up and then slowing down again, right? So that is because if you go to your animation tab up there um, and then by default, yours will actually be set to dope sheet. So this is the default dope sheet. Um, and what we're gonna do is change this to graph editor. And this will show you the actual, uh, the keyframes, but also their movement. So you can see it's slow, speeding up, and then slowing down again, okay? Now it's got all your keyframes, so you should have like six separate channels for, for keyframes, um, and it's all rather confusing. So click the normalize, by the way, and then that will, uh, because you're dealing with location and rotation, it doesn't know how to combine like location values with rotation values. It's kind of like, what's the unit system you go off to put that all on one chart? So Normalize will just make things easier and just put it all in like one area and easier to read. Anyway, so what I wanna do is with these starting frames here, all these, I wanna make it not have that, that smoothed, off, um, smoothed off effect. I wanna make it have like a harsh start. So if I select all these, which I can do by hitting B, or just dragging over it. Yeah, you don't need to hit B anymore. <laughs> you can just drag over it like so. Um, and then we're gonna hit V, V on our keyboard, V for vector, let's go with that. V, and then we're gonna change the keyframe type to vector. And there we go. And now you can see, if we play it back, it's no longer like speed, it's no longer starting slow, speeding up, and then, you know, it's, it's starting fast, so it appears as though it's already had momentum off camera and now it's sliding in and it's stopping. And that's great, that's exactly what we want. And uh, that's really all there is to it. <laughs> um, so if we were to uh, do this animation, by the way, um, you can see that if you just leave it playing, it's just playing and it's stopped. So we want our, um, yeah, we want our animation to stop at frame 30. So frame 30, uh, I, I'm sorry, I should explain that. The, the start and end frame, I'm setting the end frame to frame 30. So now that we've done that, you can see it's now repeating that animation. Now that's important, not only for just playback here, but it means when we actually render it, you're not gonna have 100 extra frames rendered at the end there where the donuts, everything is sitting perfectly still. Um, and, uh, and that's basically, that's roughly it. Now you can play around with like timing. Like for example, you could have your rotation, like this one here, you could make the rotation stop earlier. So like the last few frames, like it's sliding in and then the last few frames, it's like stopped rotating. I don't know if you want that or maybe you'd even want it to go the other way, like an extra bit of rotation at the end there. In fact, that does actually look kind of cool. So I might do that. Yeah, let's just do uh, move everything back one frame and have the rotation end like one frame after. That could be kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. The other thing is I, I think my rotation start, I don't, I'm not seeing a lot of rotation as it flies in there. so. I'm gonna set this to uh, go the minus direction even more. And then I'll apply lock rot there, lock rot, and now it's sliding in. Now it appears as though it's spinning in at a little bit more, more direction. So it starts at, uh, I guess you wouldn't see it unless it was normalized. Um, da, 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 let's hide those. Let's see the rotation. Okay, so it's starting at about minus 50 degrees along the Z axis and then it's spinning around and it's going back to zero degrees. So it's a full 150 degrees of rotation for, for my animation. Um, but there you go. Oh, by the way, home key will like center and put everything like right in the view there. Um, home key will just center that for you. So that's a nice one to remember. So the plate, the plate's done um, and it's fine. If you wanted to, you could add other movement to your scene. Uh, you'll, you might notice, like, you might be wondering why we're not changing the, or adding any animation to our coffee cup. Uh, one big reason, <laughs> it's got liquid in it. So if we had that, I'd love to have the coffee cup sliding in as well, but then we'd have to like rig this uh, liquid so that it like does this motion as it like, like settles and uh, you know, this is probably like a 20 part series already. And people are gonna look back on my channel and they're gonna go, wow, a donut tutorial. Wow, it's 20 parts. Uh, why? 
<laughs> so I don't want to stretch this even longer to be like 30 parts just because we've rigged some liquid, which is like highly unnecessary. So we're not going to do that. You're welcome to it. I'd love to see somebody try. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to bother touching the coffee cup. It's just going to sit there. But one little small thing we can do just to add a little bit of movement to it uh, is the focal point. So you'll remember that we set the focal point for our donut, and that's defined by this empty here, this uh, this circle, which is called DOF, right? This is the layout, it's called DOF. Um, well, the, the, the donut starts off camera, so we could have a little story, a little goofy little story, I don't know. Uh, we could have the depth of field, like the cameraman was focusing on that coffee cup, and then the plate slid in there, and he's like, whoa, 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 something off camera, sliding in, watch this, and then he changes the focal point to be on the donut. So let's do that, why not? So uh, I've got the DOF, the DOF empty here selected, and I'm gonna hit I, because this is the final frame. So this is where we want the depth of field to end, right? This is where we want it to, to uh, yeah, focusing on the donut. So at frame 30, DOF, DOF selected, I'm gonna hit I, and we're just gonna select uh, location, not rotation, because it doesn't matter. Uh, so location. And then uh, we need to move it to the coffee cup, but we need to decide like which frame, because like if we, by the way, if you move something, like this, but you don't have the right frame set, and then you go, oh, what frame do I want it? Too late, <laughs> because you, you didn't set a keyframe, it's now it's now moved its position back to its old location. So anyway, you wanna decide like which frame do you wanna have the, uh, the DOF, like uh, when do you want the cameraman to notice the thing sliding in out of left frame? Uh, and start to change the movement from the coffee cup towards here. And I think it's about here, right? Like you start noticing some movement about frame 12. So frame 12, I'm gonna move this G along the red axis, which is X, all the way to the back there. And then I'm just gonna move it so that it's basically on the coffee cup, right there. Okay. And then I'm gonna hit I and location again. And now when we do that, you can see that that object is flying in there. So uh, let's see how that looks actually. Um, let's zoom in there and there you go. So you can see it's it's crystal clear in fro focus um, before it and then when it moves forward, the, the, the cup falls out of focus and it's now fallen on the donut. By the way, you might notice um, at some point during this rotation and like animation thing, your sprinkles have uh, started to become a little Porky piney, can't help you there. Um, <laughs> the particle systems in Blender are a little weird. Um, if you just select the icing and double tab, it'll go into edit mode and then back into object mode and uh, it'll correct itself. But uh, I don't know, the particle systems are being revamped in Blender right now. Like both two things, Mantaflow, Actually, that might not even be particles. And then particle node. So two big changes are happening, which basically means no fixes are being done for things like this, right? Like, so it's just a bug and it's an annoying bug, but I think provided like the last frame is where the, 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 uh, the sprinkles should be, then nobody should notice that it starts off with the sprinkles a little bit haywire. I hope when we do the animation, we'll we'll find out. But uh, but there you go. Speaking of which, by the way, before we move to the next the next video, um, if you don't like the look of your sprinkles, if you see too much intersection, because this is another like final little touch, if you see too much intersection, which I do here, of the sprinkles, just change the seeds until you find one which doesn't look as bad. Um, so find a seed that you like, cycle through it. Yours will be totally different to mine. So it's completely random. Um, that looks, uh, there's a bit of intersection there. You know, this is, you know, one of those things, right? Why doesn't Blender have uh, particles, a particle system which will detect intersection? It will soon, at some point, eventually, maybe in the future. Maybe that's what particle nodes is gonna include, who knows? But I've been wanting a feature like that for years. It's not here yet. So we just have to do this for now. Uh, that might be as good as I can get it. <laughs> no, I don't know. Actually, I did like 33, like the one that was straight after. That's okay to me. I'll go with that. We're going with that. All right, so animation's happening. Let's jump over into the next video where we're gonna talk about render settings and render this bad boy out. So click there and I will see you in the next video.